In today's video, we're back with some updated NHL trade rumors. We're now just over two days away from the deadline. We've seen a fair bit of trade action already. So in today, we're going to take a rundown of all the top names and what all the latest rumors are heading towards the deadline. We'll get into all the latest coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as we head into the NHL trade deadline, certainly stay tuned here to Top Shelf Hockey. We're going to have a ton of videos coming up here as all these trades kind of take place over the next few days leading to the deadline on Monday. Monday is expected to be a fairly busy day and I would not be surprised at all or shock at all to see some more bigger names even move ahead of the deadline over the weekend here so certainly stay tuned we'll keep you all up to date with all the latest happenings as the news breaks now let's get started here with the ottawa senators now we already saw one big move out of this organization earlier with columbus and duchene now we could see some other big names as well like stone or the zingle there's lots of speculation around those guys and they also have some other uh, veteran players that you know can play a smaller role but certainly could be moved here as well now the latest on mark stone is the senators are working very hard to try to convince him to sign a long-term contract and stay but right now it does appear it is more likely that he won't sign and if he's not signed here uh, over the weekend it's you know very 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 likely that he does get moved winnipeg and nashville do appear to be the front runners now on duchene it was revealed before that nashville appeared to be very very interested now a lot of people are saying that nashville even though they were interested in duchene they're that much more interested in stone of course winnipeg jets have been rumored and linked to this player for some time here as well there was one like a crazy rumor within the last week that they might be looking at duchene and stone and maybe line a would be involved well i don't like i mentioned in that video i don't see that happening and obviously now with duchene out of the picture that's certainly not going to happen at all but i do think that winnipeg and nashville are the two most likely teams to land stone should a trade go down as far as ryan dezingle goes lately we've been hearing some rumblings about the boston bruins now uh, apparently they might be interested in this player they've already added charlie coyle uh, which we saw the other day here and of course coyle can play second line wing he could be their third line center as well i do believe he was kind of starting on the wing but if they add another winger like dezingle it would certainly be another top six winger with a lot of speed it probably would make more sense to move coyle down uh, and I do think that the price tag for Dezingle in this case likely would be a first round pick. At least that's what was speculated before. But at the same time, the Bruins do have some other prospects that might interest Ottawa as well. So it may not be a first, it might be a prospect, it may be a second or something like that. But the Bruins right now are the main team that's been linked to Dezingle as of late. But then again, the Bruins are reportedly interested in many of the other you know, top wingers that are available in the trade list here. Uh, so they're in the name, a team that's going to come up here quite a bit as we kind of run through all of these top guys now of course you can't forget the new york islanders they're linked to a lot of different players you can't uh, forget lula Marillo here is a guy who's willing to go for it when he's got a team he believes can win the islanders are currently leading the metropolitan division heading into the playoffs with some good momentum and many do expect that lamarillo will add to that roster and try to make a run forward here now of course he's like i said he's been linked to a lot of these top wingers since he's been linked to so many players it's hard to say what they do but i do suspect that the islanders will make some kind of move they have a lot of prospects that are very interesting they still have a lot of their draft picks for the future as well so i do think they'd have the ability to add here a fair bit to this roster but it's just a matter of getting the right deal done so keep your eye on the islanders so they're linked to many players it's hard to say what clear direction they're going in. It's been even speculated it might be interested in Ilya Kovalchuk. Of course, Kovalchuk has history with Lamarillo and that big contract in New Jersey when he signed there. Um, but it looks as though the rumor, the information we had was that Kovalchuk might be more like a plan C or D, that he would probably prefer you know, a player with a larger magnitude like a Panarin or a Stone or whatever. So we'll see what happens with the Islanders, but certainly don't count them out. I do expect them to make uh, a fairly substantial play here to land a big-time player. Now, speaking of our Tammy Panarin and the Columbus Blue Jackets, obviously they made a big splash earlier, adding Matt Duchesne. The Duchesne acquisition in Columbus it certainly creates almost more questions than answers, but the general manager, Yermo Kukalana, did kind of clarify a few things earlier after that trade took place. He basically said that it's going to take a trade proposal that's absolutely knock your socks off that he can't refuse in order to move Panarin to Bobrovsky here. So it does appear that they're likely going to finish up the season in Columbus, and they're kind of going forward here, going all in, trying to add what they can 
uh, to try to go for a Stanley Cup and go for a deep playoff run. Now, of course, Matt Duchesne did not go with a contract extension, so he's a pending UFA. They give up the 2019 first-round pick, some prospects with a conditional 2020 pick. So they are limited on what they can move if they want to continue to add here. There's been some talk that they may not be done and that they might try to make another big splash and add another big-time forward as well to really make a run forward here this season. And uh, while they have Abrowski, Panarin, Duchesne, etc., I do think that there's a decent chance Duchesne could sign longer term with Columbus, especially if Panarin and Bobrovsky leave. They're going to have lots of cap space, lots of money to throw at him to make sure he stays. But at the same time, if those guys leave, is Duchesne going to want to stick around too? Because as we know, that's two teams now he's run from or didn't want to stay with long term because he didn't want to go through another rebuild. And you take away Panarin and Bobrovsky out of Columbus, that's something they're going to, certainly going to change things quite drastically for next season. But that's a, a question for another day here. But could Columbus continue to add? There's certainly lots of speculation that they're interested in doing it. But now with what they've moved out for Duchesne, they are a little bit more limited. They likely would have to take something off their roster. And it's not quite clear exactly what they would be willing to give up. I think they would be very interested in moving Alex Wenberg. But that contract would be very difficult for most teams to take on given his play as of late. Jumping over to the New York Rangers and Kevin Hayes and Matt Zuccarello as well as Adam McQuaid. Now, these guys have not been held out of their games as of the recording of this video as of yet. And, of course, we did see McQuaid leave the game yesterday a little bit early uh, with a potential injury. So, hopefully, it's nothing too serious there. But there has been some talk that maybe Hayes and Zuccarello could possibly be traded as a combo when a few teams have inquired as such, including the Dallas Stars and the Nashville Predators. And, of course, now that Nick Jensen has been traded from the Red Wings over to the Washington Capitals, that does move Adam McQuaid to the top, probably near the top of the list for rental defensemen that would be available as well. Uh, so I do think the Rangers are expected to be active here. There's lots of teams showing a lot of interest in these guys. Anybody who was interested in Duchesne but did not make that deal now is turning their attention to Kevin Hayes as he's probably the next best center iceman available on the trade bait board here. And like I said, a lot of teams are looking at him in Zuccarello as a package. And we have confirmation that the Stars and Predators apparently are in the mix there. But there's not the only ones we've had. Other teams linked to both these players as well. So I do expect there's a, quite a likelihood all three of those players with the Rangers get moved uh, and very well likely could be as a package deal. Now one player that's been on the trade bait board pretty well for a big chunk of the season here that we haven't talked a lot about lately is Philadelphia Flyers winger Wayne Simmons. I mean, Wayne Simmons is a player that I think is quite likely going to get traded. Now that we've seen some movement, I do think that Senna starts to set the market here for some of these players and we very well could see some more traction on him. But the one team that was linked to him before was the Boston Bruins. Of course, like I said, the Bruins have been linked to Ryan Dezingle as well. Not quite clear what direction they'll go in. A lot of it's going to depend on asking price as well. That certainly will play a big role in what they choose to do and what moves they decide to make here. Um, but there hasn't been a ton of chatter around Wayne Simmons, even though he's got lots of experience and is expected to be one of the top guys to go. Uh, lately, there's always been quiet on Simmons. Uh, the latest I've heard is the Bruins were showing some interest, but uh, as well as some other teams like the Nashville Predators, for example. Like These teams have been linked to a lot of different players. Uh, I think they're kind of exploring the NHL trade market and kind of going around, bouncing back and forth, seeing what the best deals are, trying to get the best price and best deal for their team. So keep your eye on Simmons. He is still very likely to move. And there's a variety of teams that have shown interest, but right now it's not quite clear who the front runner is. Detroit Red Wings general manager Ken Holland has indicated that it's unlikely that his top free agents, Jimmy Howard and Gus Nyquist, get re-signed before the deadline. So it is quite likely they get traded as well. I mean, of course, there is some uh, forms of no trade clause with their contracts, so they do have some say on where they will go. But However, there's a couple more players to keep your eye on. Now, with Howard, I don't think there's a strong goalie market right now, uh, so it's hard to say if he gets dealt, but he would probably be near the top of the list for any team who might be looking at a goaltender. Devils goaltender Keith Kincaid would join Jimmy Howard on that list as you know some of the more likely goaltenders to be available. But like I said, there doesn't appear to be a lot of teams looking for goaltending depth right now. So it is unclear right now if they would get traded. Uh, Nyquist, however, I think would make a nice addition to many teams. He was previously linked to the Calgary Flames. The Flames are another team having a strong year. Likely looking to add, like I said, it's kind of becoming a bit of an arms race in some divisions and some conferences here as certain teams start to bulk up. Uh, the Flames are a team that haven't really done anything major yet, and it is like suspected that they very well could be adding another top forward. They've been linked to other guys as well, like Zuccarello. So time will tell here what happens. But Nyquist is a player that they've had, apparently had looked at before. 
But based on Ken Holland's uh, remarks there, this looks as though they're quite likely to get moved ahead of the deadline. Now, the Florida Panthers, another team to keep your eye on. Obviously, a team that likely is not going to make the playoffs this year. Uh, they are still speculated to be clearing or trying to clear more cap space to prepare for next offseason as they are speculated to be going hard after Artemi Panarin and Sergei Bobrovsky once they become free agents, assuming a trade doesn't happen with them ahead of time, which at this point appears unlikely. But it has been speculated that they've asked forward Mike Hoffman for the teams on his no-trade list so they can begin shopping him. And there was some rumors last week as well about former Jonathan Huberdeau. But between Hoffman and Huberdeau, it makes a lot more sense that so Hoffman would be the one to go. He's got one more year left on his contract. He hasn't been there nearly as long. Huberdeau's been there a long time. Obviously drafted and developed by the Panthers. And I do see him as a better player longer term with the Panthers organization. But it looks as though in order to clear some more cap space that Mike Hoffman might be another guy that's traded. Of course, he comes with the ability to score a lot of goals, a lot of points as well. And many of these other teams have certainly might be uh, looking to inquire on him now that that news has been made public. But it's certainly another guy to keep your eye on here as we approach the deadline. And as I mentioned the other day, the Minnesota Wild are a team that appears to be in selling mode. They have kind of fallen out of the playoff picture. Right now, things are not looking good for the Wild. Obviously, we've already seen one trade with Charlie Coyle. Uh, very quite likely here that they'll attempt to move Eric Stahl. Possibly even guys like Granlin and Zucker as well. I mean, even though Zucker just inked a fairly long-term contract last summer, uh, right now the Minnesota Wild are willing to consider anything and everything on a lot of different players as they really prepare here for their future. Uh, so I do expect the Wild to continue to be sellers and to be very active as well. Uh, not a lot of teams linked to Granlin and Zucker right now. Of course, Eric Stahl previously was linked to the Winnipeg Jets, but we'll see what happens there. I mean, it would make a lot of sense for him to be like a number two center like they brought in last year. So it kind of would make sense in that regard, but there's lots of other teams apparently showing interest in Stahl as well. I think his veteran leadership would be welcomed on many NHL teams looking to make a playoff push here. There was also some news out of Vancouver as well that came through the TSN radio and that uh, my uh, YouTube pal Gio on Lego Rocks 99 had reported earlier today as well that the Canucks may consider trading prospect Jonathan Dolan that after his first year here in the American Hockey League, the team might have soured a little bit on him as a player and might uh, be looking to possibly move him for another younger player who they feel could get into their lineup a little bit quicker. Now, of course, Jonathan Dolan was acquired from the Ottawa Senators in exchange for Alex Burroughs a few years ago. Of course, Burroughs didn't really work out that great with Ottawa and has since been bought out and retired. At the time of the trade, many considered Dolan to be very much an overpayment for the acquisition of Burroughs, but so far he hasn't gotten into any action with the Canucks. And now, you know, they're talking about possibly trading him according to some of their analysts there in the Vancouver uh, area. So we'll see what happens, but the Canucks, I don't expect to make any big splashes. There's been some talk around Alex Edler as well. Obviously, it's, you know, he does have a no trade clause. So he controls his destiny to a degree. But there's also been talks about a contract extension uh, possibly being trying to work out with them as well to kind of help bring along some of the other younger Canuck defensemen. He'd be a great mentor uh, for them, and he is very interested in staying with Vancouver as well. So I don't expect to see a lot out of Vancouver, but if they have another contending team that they might be able to deal with here to possibly swap Dolan for another forward, certainly is a possibility, or that very well might be something that we see later in the offseason. Hearing Jonathan Dolan's name in trade rumors was a fair bit surprising, so there may not be much come from it, but certainly something interesting for the Canucks to take a look at. So that is all the latest and all the top players that are likely going to get moved here before the NHL trade deadline. Of course, it's not a guarantee all these players get traded, but I do expect to see a lot of activity here over the weekend. Wouldn't be surprised before the deadline comes, like so between Saturday, Sunday, leading into Monday, that we see one or two more big name players get moved ahead of time. Seems like a lot of teams this year are kind of anxious to trying to get ahead of their competitors. It's a little bit of an arms race in some cases uh, to make some big time acquisitions here to get ready for the playoffs. So stay tuned as the news breaks and all these trades happen. We will certainly be uploading plenty of videos discussing the trades, giving my thoughts and analysis so we can continue discussing all the things going on at the NHL trade deadline. If you're new to the channel here, hope to consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams. There's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up before you go. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.